Welcome back to Virtual School Assembly. Today our guest is Trent Bray. Trent loves being a father to three amazing kids and a husband to an outstanding wife. He started his own business at age 14 and has always worked on side projects, even when he had another job, driven by his passion to create a change in the world. And that's all he gave me for an intro, but I have to say, Trent is someone I'm so excited to have on the show today. Um, he has a podcast called Hustle Today. He'll probably talk about that in, in the show today. And that's how I first connected with him. And it's because he's a family man first, and then he's always doing something cool. And so we connected a while ago. I love this guy. Um, I've been trying to get him on for a while, and I'm thrilled he's finally here. Uh, welcome to the show, Trent. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So hello, students and everyone listening. I'm super excited and honored to be able to speak to you today. Thank you, Tyler, for the opportunity. There's so much that I've learned in my short time on Earth so far, and I look forward to sharing just some of that with you today. So I want to speak to you about consistent actions and passion and how those go together. So my my main business that I work on is called Hustle Energy, and I've I've always I haven't always had that hustle spirit about me. And I've had to learn along the way. Um, I've kind of had to learn the hard way about consistency. And, how it's tied to results. So throughout my entrepreneurial and my school journey even, um, I've learned the value of consistent action, of pursuing goals that you're passionate about. And this all started about the age of 14, uh, like was mentioned. At that time, you know, I wanted to learn how to build websites. I just thought websites were so cool. And it's like, I, I want to learn how to do that. And at the time, there was no real resources. Like, I'm 14 years old. I can't drive. You know, my parents are working all the time. I can't get to a bookstore to be able to buy a book. There's no YouTube. There's no one I could really talk to. You know, my age group, they were all just focused on video games. And, you know, it was a completely different time. So what I did is when I wanted to learn how to build a website, I'd have to pull up a website. You go to it, you right click, hit view source code, and that, you know, pulls up the code of the website. And so I just stared at the website, hours and hours of just staring at the code and trying to reverse engineer how to create a website. So I, you know, okay, I see it starts this way and it ends this way and, you know, go from there. And, you know, most, most people don't want to put that time and effort into something that they want to do anymore. They just want quick results. And um, the ones that do put in that effort, that consistent effort, uh, those are the ones that will succeed. So I was able to learn that skill and turn it into a business. I reached out to uh, family members, friends, and even did some local advertising, which back then met newspapers and print ads and uh, just, again, a different time. But I was driven by that passion to, to create websites. And I was driven by the ability to help small businesses and help them be seen. Um, later, I was able to acquire some vending machines. And soon I felt like, honestly, I didn't need school anymore. Uh, turns out I did need school. But now I never dropped out of school, but I didn't focus on my grades as much as I thought to the point where I almost didn't graduate high school. Um, I've since recognized what a mistake that was. I was, I just, at the time I was like, you know what, I've got this, I've got life figured out. Typical teenager syndrome, you know, I've, I've got this figured out. So at the time I wasn't really focused on my business. I wasn't focused on school. I wasn't focused on relationships. I just focused on what seemed like was fun at the time. And, you know, I, what seems like fun now may lead to regret later. And for me, that personally was the case. But um, so since I didn't focus too much on my business, it just kind of fell by the wayside. Soon after high school, I had to take a job at Best Buy. Nothing against Best Buy. I really enjoyed my time there. But it wasn't the path that I thought I saw myself on. You know, it wasn't the path of massive, massive success that if I'd stuck with it, I could be on that trajectory. And the problem was I didn't stick with it. Now, every single millionaire that I've met in my life thus far has had just one thing in common. They all had an idea and they stuck with it until it was successful. If it wasn't successful at first or immediately, that, that didn't matter to them. They kept going. It was hard work day in, 
day out and it gave them the results that they wanted. They had a goal and they consistently went after it. If that doesn't sound like fun, I get that. That's where the passion comes in. Having a bigger purpose, having a why is, if you will, you know, if you aren't so driven by the pursuit of whatever your purpose is, you will quit. I have multiple times. Oftentimes I'm chasing money or acceptance or a material goal. Uh, those can help reinforce your why, but it's not what should motivate you. It should be bigger than you. Times will get tough in work, in school, in life, and it's the things that make you get out of bed in the morning that excite you, that keep you going. So the company I mentioned earlier, Hustle Energy, I have worked at it and wanted to quit more times than I can remember. Um, but my why personally is trying to help other entrepreneurs like myself get through those tough times because I've been there and I felt like there was no one I could turn to. And you know, if I couldn't live through that, how was I expected to help others? And so I've spent three years of time, money, and other missed opportunities to focus on bringing just one product to market. And it's taken all this time and the product is in production today, which has been a huge relief, <laughs> but it has been in production three other times too. It's just one, one thing after another of setbacks, but this is just the beginning of what I've, what I've got planned. And it's taken three years of action to get to this point. <laughs> Now, there's a common phrase that goes something like this. It says, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. You can't stick the entire elephant in your mouth at once. Now, I'm not actually encouraging you to eat an elephant, but the point remains, you can't tackle a huge goal in just one bite. You've got to take lots of little bites. So let's say you, know, you want to be a star on TikTok. You can't do that in one video or maybe even a hundred videos. It takes networking with other people, uh, consistent daily action, even when you don't want to, and the passion behind it. If your answer is to why you want to be a star on TikTok is to be famous, you're approaching it the wrong way. Why do you want to be famous? Is it to promote a cause that you resonate with? That should be your why. The reason I talk about passion is because these daily consistent actions and these daily consistent actions is because you won't want to do these things every day. I know I don't, but you're doing a disservice to your cause if you don't keep going. That's the driving force to keep you going even when you don't want to. If I, for example, if I tried to be, say, an Instagram travel influencer, it would last maybe two or three posts because honestly travel isn't something I'm passionate enough about to dedicate every day to. I like to travel. I like to see new places and have new experiences, but there's a difference when it's something I'm trying, when I'm doing every day, trying to rack my brain about 32 reasons to love Bali or 10 great hikes to do in Maui. You know, I've learned the hard way many times, but I can now see that I'm on the path where I can see my daily consistent actions paving the way towards my goals. And I'm grateful for all those opportunities that I learned in the past to get me to this point. And for that, I'm thankful, but I'm hoping I can save you a little bit of time and be able to shortcut a few of those steps that you don't give up, you find something you're passionate about and keep attacking it every single day. That is an awesome message, Trent. Um, and I, I love your story because it's so closely related to what I went through, right? I, so when you were learning how to code on the computer, I probably that same exact time, I was doing the <laughs> same thing, but I was in my college dorm doing it. I've got a few years on you. And I, I had the, the benefit of the program Dreamweaver. So I would take the code, uh, yeah. I would strip it off of a website, I'd import it into Dreamweaver, then I could tweak it, I would make changes to the code, do a preview, and I could see exactly what it changed, so it was a little easier for me to be, do that from a lab or from the school computers, but that's how I learned to code, and, and I did the same thing, asking family and friends, do you want a website, and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that, so I love your story, and especially because the, the important part of that story is, again, the consistency. It builds up over time, and 
for, for most things, it's the first 10, 20, 100 times you don't see any results or very little results. Eventually, and Malcolm Gladwell talks about this with the tipping point, eventually mm -hmm. there's a point where you reach a saturation in the market where things start to take off and it either goes crazy or it stays at the same level forever and you probably either need to radically change or, or quit that thing. And so it's hard when you talk about consistency um, because sometimes being consistent, I, I know YouTubers that have done a video every day for 10 years and they still have mm -hmm. seven subscribers. So what would you say to the kids watching this that have been trying to be consistent for a long time but they're not seeing results? Should they continue? Should they pivot? What do you think? So it goes back to the, to the reinforcement of why you're doing it. If you're trying to be you know, a YouTuber and you're doing it for a worthy cause, then absolutely keep going. Um, if you're doing it because you want money, pivot. Find something else because that's obviously not your path uh, after 10 years of consistent uploads. But you know, there are those people that do go after something for seemingly forever and they don't, you know, they don't get their goal um, in, a, in what they feel is a reasonable amount of time. But the perfect example is artists. Artists are usually, you know, more well received after they've passed away and their, their work is, is then uh, everything that they wanted it to be. It's just taken them longer than they expected. And obviously they weren't there to see that, which is unfortunate, but it's, if it's a worthy goal, then I'd say keep going for it and, you know, try different things, network with different in individuals. I've found through the power of podcasting, networking has been an amazing opportunity for me and my business um, and furthering what I want to do just by reaching out to different individuals. Right. So let's talk about the podcast for a while, just because we're already talking about consistency. When you started your podcast, um, first, is this your first podcast or have you done others before? So this is my first podcast of my own. I have been a, a co-host on another podcast prior to this that was automotive based. Uh, that's one of, one of my passions. Um, and so I got to see a little bit behind the scenes, but it was more or less showing up and you know, helping contribute that way. It wasn't, you know, behind the scenes work. Okay. So when you started Hustle the Day, there's a lot of stuff that you hadn't done before and starting a podcast. I mean, it's not overly complicated, but there are a lot of moving parts. And so you, there is a learning curve. You have to learn a lot about how to set up a podcast, you know, how, what's happening on the back end, how to promote it, how to get guests and things like that. Um, yeah. What was that like for you in getting started? Um, you know, were you frustrated? Was it easy to get guests? What was your experience starting up with the podcast? Uh, it was incredibly difficult for me. So I am, I, for a long time, I've identified as an introvert. And so I don't feel comfortable talking or reaching out to people. And I realized over time that that was a self-fulfilling prophecy. If I kept being introverted, then I was never going to get out of that cycle. So the podcast was kind of a way to help break me out of that cycle. So I knew it was going to be uncomfortable, but when you're uncomfortable, that's when you're growing. So I knew that it wasn't going to be easy for me, but I knew I needed to put in the consistent effort and I did. And it has been an awesome experience for me because uh, like I said, the networking opportunities have been awesome, but I can now, I've now helped other people launch their podcasts. You know, I'm just helping them out because I know I've been down that path before and it really isn't that complicated once you know everything. So, and that's really, you know, rocket science isn't that difficult once you know everything, but um, it's, it's just helping those out that are on their journey just a little bit, a uh, little bit behind me. So right. uh, it's been a really rewarding experience learning that because then I can help others out with it too. Okay. So I, I love talking about podcasting because when you share your message of consistency, I know that you practice what you preach. Uh, when, when it comes to your why, 
you said mm -hmm. you can it's easier to keep moving forward if you have a, a, a significant why and i know especially early on in podcasting you look at your download numbers and stuff and it's totally depressing i worked so hard and you know i, <laughs> I worked on this episode for 10 hours and i got two downloads or whatever right so what got you through that what was what's your why that had you moving forward with your podcast you know what you still go through those uh those feelings you know every time you release a new episode it's like oh i can't believe this message is so amazing everybody needs to hear this mm -hmm. and then five people ten people twenty people hundred people whatever it is you know it's it's like that's not enough this message really needs to get out there um so it's it can be a little bit frustrating but i know that i've had some people that i've talked to that have been doing podcasting longer than I have and they say don't look at your numbers don't look at your numbers stop looking at your numbers because they're a couple years into it and they're like one month I will get a thousand downloads on my first episode it's like it doesn't matter what the latest one is keep putting the content out there and you will hit that tipping point like you said yeah. you know if you're consistent at it because the algorithms support the consistent action too. Mm -hmm. it certainly does. Now, uh, Trent, part of the reason I like your story is because you identify first as a, a father and as a husband, and I love that because I'm I'm the same way. During this time, during coronavirus, you've got to spend a lot more time as a husband and a father because we're all stuck at home. Tell me a little yep. bit about how how has that gone for you? Has you know are are you? You know, is this giving you opportunities you wouldn't normally have? You work from home anyways, right? And so in many ways, this hasn't changed. What has been your experience as a, a self-employed entrepreneur during coronavirus? So it definitely has changed. Uh, you know, my wife, after, you know, a couple of weeks of this, she's like, you really, your schedule hasn't really changed, has it? I'm like, no, it really has changed. At least it felt like to me because, I mean, my, fortunately, my oldest is in second grade. So I don't have several kids in school. My next youngest is in preschool. And so they okay. still did do preschool with her on the computer and whatnot. And they'd deliver materials, but it wasn't a tremendous amount of work. Uh, with my seven-year-old, the first week, it was like eight hours of schoolwork. Like we were, and this was, you know, consistent effort. You know, my wife and I would divide and, like, okay, I do better with math with her. You do better with this. You know, let's, let's work on this together. And it took a lot of time initially. And the teacher scaled back a little bit based on feedback, but uh, it still required more effort. And then I also, um, I also realized during this whole time, it's like, okay, life is precious, you know, I need to be spending more time with my kids. And mm -hmm. so if I'm, you know, done with my work for the day at four, instead of working on next tomorrow's tasks, it's like, all right, I'm going to go upstairs and we'll work on this. And um, I, we ended up doing a complete yard makeover during this time. And it's like, I'm just, I, the work hasn't been as important, I guess you could say. I mean, I, I still do put in that consistent action, but it's maybe not 12 hours a day. It's been seven hours a day. Right. Yeah. You're still hustling. Um, but I love hearing that again, because we, we're doing similar things. We've done a total yard makeover and, and we're working on projects in the house. My son just built an arcade cabinet. So we have old school video nice. games now in our basement and, and it's been fun to do that. Um, when I interview most people, um, they're passionate about their business. They're passionate about what they're working on, but you don't hear that same passion in being a husband and being a father. Why is it, do you think, that you are so passionate about your family and, and spending time with your kids? What, what makes that different for you than for other people that aren't so excited to talk about that? I, I wish I could tell you exactly what, what it was, but you know what? I mean, I've got a, a one-year-old who, you know, I just, personally, my wife doesn't like this stage of, you know, childhood just because they can't communicate what they want and uh, as eloquently as they'd like. Um, but there, everything is just so amazing and so wonderful. And 
every little thing that they do is just new and exciting. And, you know, you see that at that age and then it's helped me realize that, you know what, my seven year old's going through the same thing, even though she's had more experiences. So, you know, we just got her a big bike, you know, you know, she's out of the kid bikes now. And, um, you know, she's seen things differently now. She's like, I didn't realize how hard it was for me to ride my bike to my friend's house down the road on this little bike. Now I can have gears and it makes it so much easier. And it just, it's so exciting to her now. It's opened a new world of possibilities to her just by having a different bike. And so seeing it from my son's eyes, who's one year old, one year old, and then translating it to, uh, you know, my four and seven year old, you realize that that's what life is. You're always learning things. You're always exploring things until you decide to stop learning. And that's what most adults do. So uh, it's unfortunate that that happens because the last couple of years has been such a learning experience for me. I've learned so much about myself and others and what I'm capable of just by keep going, still doing those consistent actions. That's, that's what's, help me see what a ama- what an amazing world we live in and what our kids are experiencing. That's cool. Thanks for sharing that Trent. Now, and, and thanks for your message on consistency and, and moving forward. I think that's something that kids really need right now, especially as we're still working mostly from home. I mean, things have loosened up a little bit, but, but kids are, are looking for things to keep their time. And right now developing a skill or a new talent it's going to pay off in the long run. And so if you're consistent with it and keep moving forward, follow Trent's advice and and you're going to be in really good shape. Um, Trent, love your podcast. We'll link to it in the description. Um, Hustle the day. If if people want to connect with you or learn more about you, is there any other place that I should send them? Yeah. So I do have um, a website. uh, It's trentvbray.com. That'll link you to my social media profiles and all that and other businesses I'm working on. And so that's kind of the best hub to reach me at. Cool. Well, thanks again for being on the show today. Really appreciate your message. Yeah, no problem. Thank you.